Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Sons of the Forest 1.0. How are you feeling about it so far? Here's a ton of building tips, tricks, and glitches. Whether you played the game since the beginning of early access or just picked the game up on release, this video should have something for everyone. So the first trick, call it a glitch if you want, I call it dumb AI, is if you want to play Titanic Simulator- <laughs> Oh boy. Editor Rippy D, cut that please. Nope. Is build a base next to water starting off with a defensive wall. Doesn't matter how big or small it is. This will actually turn into one of the best quote unquote traps in the game. After you have a defensive wall set up, I left the entire back open, but you only need to leave a small section out that the NPCs think that they can get through. They'll see this as a vulnerable spot to your base. So, to cheese the AI even further, if you build a normal wall close by, or really anything that they can jump over next to water, the NPCs will see this as the easiest way to get to the vulnerable spot. And now that they're going for a nice swim, we don't need to put any more effort into building our defenses. I think our work's done here. For the circular style builds, I'm only going to spend about 30 seconds on this if that. I already made a 10 minute video on everything to know about these. I'm only bringing them up because the only way to initially stack the logs got patched. The new way is to drop a beam down, support it with a strut. When you look up and get this icon and place the logs, they'll stack on top of each other, but down on the ground. And after you place as many as you want, the rest of the process with the logs free snapping is exactly the same. Okay, maybe I lied on the 30 seconds. To take this a little further, if you do the same thing another level up, dropping the beam down and then picking it up with a strut just like we did before and stacking them, you can remove everything around it leaving the stack logs floating. This allows you to build stuff like a TP or whatever at a height that I shouldn't be allowed to. Here's a normal log standing up next to it for reference. So it's a quarter log higher and longer than I should be allowed to do. And it's floating. <laughs> Talking about floating, here's the 500th way to make floating bases. This works in 1.0. They've patched method after method on this and we just keep seeming to find another way. I've seen people playing around with struts and other methods, but I think I found the easiest one. You start off by building anything, or you can even start on something already built. If you put a pillar in that's any size other than a full beam, so quarter, half, three quarter. In this example, I'll cut this in half and put the other halves on the other points. Then build a wall all the way up, making sure you're just stacking, not connecting the halves together. You'll hear the last one snap. From here, this icon can be a little tricky to get. Connect the halves together. It has to be in this order. Once they're connected, the game doesn't see this as a wall anymore, and everything underneath it can go. This works anywhere, any size, any height, even if you already had something built and want to add this on. For the next idea, I'm sure plenty of other people have thought about this already, but after you've gotten the shovel and dug up a bunker, you can build on top of it. Now my design here was inspired from what a lot of city sidewalks look like these days, uh, but obviously you can build whatever you want and have a basement in your build, so a safe spot with endless resources depending on which one you decide to build on. From here until the end of the video, I realized I don't try enough things out in a game. This is where it starts to get a little more interesting, at least for me. If I build a rope bridge, and I know most of you know how to do this, but for those who don't, all you have to do to build a rope bridge is have two horizontal logs and they don't have to be lined up perfect or anything, then use two ropes to connect them. I found the rope bridge has a lot of uses in this game, especially fixing the building system when you're screwed. Let me explain. Let's say we had a building on a flat surface and wanted to connect it to another that wasn't on the quote unquote grid and the terrain wasn't even remotely flat like in this example. By using a rope bridge in this situation, it'll save you a lot of frustration because it's not confined like everything else building wise in Sons of the Forest. This can be an easy fix if you're, well, in trouble. <laughs> The next example is more of a decorative use of the rope bridge, and I like this one a lot. With floors, it won't let you do this without, obviously, tricks, but with the bridge, you can actually go both ways before laying the planks, giving you a weaving pattern after you place the flooring down. You can also remove certain planks you don't like, and we'll get into this more in a second. Now for this idea, I'm going to rush it for the video, it may not look the best, I'm just trying to give you guys ideas. I'm going to start off the same way, and this time, also not build even close to on the grid, or even the terrain heights. With everything crooked, off-center, and not level, let's play with this. I'm going to take it even further and chop the first two after the ground level foundations to quarters, then halves, three-quarter, and then leaving the last two full. Using the rope bridge again, we can connect all this together, making in this case a very bad-looking spiral staircase. But hopefully it inspired you guys to mess around with it. If you figured something out from this, let me know in the comments. Now the bridge used to build in one direction, 
from where you started it to the end. Now you can place planks freely or use the old method of just spamming them from one side to the other. Something else that is somewhat new is it used to remove logs in the same order. So if it was placed from right to left or vice versa, it'd remove the last plank. Now all of them are free. So using your imagination here, I'm gonna remove every other log to make a pergular type feel, but there's a lot more you can do with this. With it removed, this is what it looks like, and it's still walkable, you won't fall through, but it's janky. Let's continue on the rope bridge. Again, you can spam all the planks from one side to the other instead of placing one in order like a normal floor. Now that we have a rope bridge, if you wanna build a railing or anything on top of it, you'll notice the game won't let you. There's a really easy solution to this. All you need to do is start on a built platform and then extend the stick snap points out. After you get the sticks placed, you can make them into a fence. Now with the fence done on one side, the way to make both sides uniform is to snap one stick into the middle and then across to the other side. Once it's on the other side, the middle one can be removed and the rest continues as it did before. So with both sides done, this is what it looks like. I think it looks really good, especially the dips in the middle. Let's take this even further though, and I think this is easier without the stairs in yet. I'm gonna bring this fence down the ramp and you'll notice here I get a really weird icon, but it will snap to the last point and so will the rest. After that, the stairs can go in. So this is what it looks like now, and just like normal fences, you're gonna wanna reinforce all these with rocks, otherwise they'll just fall over when you or enemies walk into them. For the veteran players, you probably already know this, but you can add a cloth and a skull to each fence post to make a skull lamp. And the direction you place the skull is always the direction it will look. So it'll always look towards you. Keep that in mind when placing them down. I'll probably cut this, but they really need to fix this stupid bug with the skulls, animal heads, or, or crosses getting stuck spam in the animation. The next thing I tested and thought was really cool and never thought of is if you grab wire, you can attach it to the fence, obviously, as well as the part that went down the stairs. Now with a solar panel and a battery hooked up, this is what really surprised me. I'm gonna run the wires normally and only connect them to the one part of the entire fence. I thought I'd have to do this more than once, but I was wrong. The power flows through everything as if it were in a straight line, which could be huge for changing how you run wires in certain situations to keep a clean look. Another thing I never thought of, probably because I don't play with sticks enough, is you can actually attach spotlights as well as other objects to an electric fence. For the spotlight, you just need to go back and free wire it like you normally would with a log. I think this is really cool, and obviously the higher the bridge, or how many lights you add, will change how dramatic this becomes. I honestly think that the spotlights shining out into the forest at night are the creepiest thing in this game. Some of this I knew about, but you can actually turn fence posts into effigies and stacking on top of them. They have more health than the standard effigies because of the fence, but it also allows you to pretty much add anything you want to them from the book for decorations. Maybe a chandelier, a wall torch, a skull lamp, a head trophy mount with a deer head, you name it. It's kind of comical that they're going for all this realism for building and all this crap can be placed on top of sticks. I could keep going and place plenty more objects on this. I like this idea a lot to make your build stand out. I'm gonna use a rock path here, not only to draw myself a straight line, but also remove the grass. And you could also do this a million different ways. Once that's done, I'm gonna grab firewood or quarter log split in half and what this is going to allow me to do, if I spin it around and try to line it up, is build a half-wide walkway out of quarter logs. This alone could be a ton of different ideas because the game doesn't make you build this straight. It can weave, etc. And when you're done, it also gives it more of the original forest rustic vibe, or at least the style of building. I think it looks cool rather than just the straight lines the game forces you to build, or tries to. Building with sticks again, I think this is another creative idea that can easily turn into more. Crouching and free placing the sticks wherever you want will allow you to get very tight placement. After that, if you line them up well and then turn them into effigies or stack on top, you'll end up with something that looks like a jail cell. And just like before, you need to reinforce these or the health of them will be extremely low. Let's take this even further. If you use the fence snap points, and then use the free snap points like we did before, we can have the best of both worlds. Let's add electricity to the fences built inside the jail cell if you want to call it that. Now if Kelvin's in there, he's safe from enemies and he's immune to the electric. Or if you trap an enemy in there, they can't get out. We know that we can keep building on the fence, so let's do what we did before. Add onto the effigies to make this a proper containment cell. I'm going to add a spotlight on this and then free wire it off the fence. This is what it looks like during the night. 
And this is what it looks like during the day. I've already made a video on this. I'm not gonna go too far into detail, but if you wanna make stone stairs or walls, you build pillars with a strut and then add one stone underneath. After that, remove the strut supporting the beam so it drops down and stop there. Plugging another video I made with the destroy command, you wanna use toggle structure resistance debug and take notice of the beam that dropped down. In this case, it's rock beam 719 and you'll see why soon. After that, we can continue building the walls as normal, as well as adding in the stairs. With the stairs and walls in, I always hated, I know, maybe OCD, the slanted rocks or wood through the walls. So we're gonna get rid of it by destroying rock beam 719 that we found before. You can do this at any time, it's just much easier to find before everything else is in the way. Now playing with this a little more, I haven't tested this enough, I'm sure there's something that could come out of it. If I remove the strut and drop the beam down, everything built on it stays where it is. And something else that's a little weird, you can also stack sticks inside of each other. Again, I haven't tested it enough. Let me know what you come up with. I'm sure something can come out of this. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but if you don't, you can stack stones at different heights to snap to. One stone is a quarter log, two is half, and so on and so forth. Where this gets interesting though, is if you stack pillars and then beams flat instead of connecting them at the top, you can chop them out, giving a really cool look to a castle or something similar. What this does is it'll have three next to each other where they're connected, and two at the ends. You can also make a similar look of wood. If I build some random sized platform, the first thing to do is place a half log or bigger down on each point. And with that done, stack the walls until they look aesthetically pleasing. This is what that looks like, and if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Until the next one, 